This is an introduction to the Hydra Drive system. We'll go through basic maintenance and a complete service. Once you have the wheel off, you're ready to get started. For a basic maintenance, you don't even need to remove the cassette. The new Hydra system allows you to pull the free hub body and cassette off as one piece. It can easily be reinstalled in this way as well. With an updated axle and end cap design, the free hub and drive mechanism are held firmly in place, but can be removed when needed. Simply grab the outside edges of the cassette and pull firmly straight off the axle. Wipe off any excess dirt and grease you find in the drive ring area. With routine maintenance, you can simply grab the axle and check for any play and make sure that the bearings turn smoothly. Pull your disc side end cap and wipe away any old grease and debris. The new Hydra end caps utilize a labyrinth seal as opposed to a Teflon one. Simply wipe the labyrinth clean of any excess dirt or grime. The Hydra system still utilizes a six paw mechanism. However, now they are individually phased. You'll also find a leaf spring in place of the old coil spring. As with Torch, the Hydra paws and springs can be removed for cleaning. The leaf spring will hold its position in the seat even with the paw removed. A pick can come in handy for removing the leaf spring. With the spring partially exposed, you can now grab the loop and compress it. This will allow you to easily slide it out of the pocket. Use the same method to return the spring to its seat. To reinstall the pawl, first make sure the spring is fully seated. Be sure you orient the pawl with the step facing out. Use the edge of the pawl to depress the spring and then rotate it into position. If you don't have a grease gun available, you can lubricate the pawls with your finger. Use your finger to dab the grease into the cavity, then wipe away any excess when you're done. With the paws greased, you're ready to lubricate the oil seal. You'll want the Dumontech Freehub oil for this. Run a bead of oil along the outside edge of the seal. If you want your Freehub to be as quiet as possible, you can also lubricate the drive ring. With a glob of Freehub grease on your finger, just spread it evenly around the drive ring. Now you can reinstall your free hub. With your bearings checked and a basic cleaning and re-lubricating of the drive mechanism, you're ready to get back on the trail. For a complete service with bearing replacement, you'll need to remove the cassette and rotor. No tools are necessary to remove the end caps. With the end cap removed, the free hub body will slide directly off the axle. As with Torch, use the axle to punch the hub shell bearings out. Start with the drive side and strike the axle directly with a mallet. Once you have the disc side bearing out of the way, you can slide the axle back through and use it to punch out the drive side bearing. A light coating of grease on the outer race is always a good idea before being pressed. You'll need your 15307 and 61804 press adapters for this job. When pressing the hub shell bearings, always use the beveled edge of the adapter towards the bearing. Make sure the gray seal on the disc side bearing is facing out. You can install the drive side bearing with the blue seals in either orientation. Align and center your press and begin pressing in the bearings. Be sure both bearings are pressed fully into their seat. Pawls and springs can be removed for cleaning. Take notice of the step on the paw. You want to make sure they keep this orientation as you remove them and reinstall them. Unseat the spring with a pick, then compress the loop to remove it from its seat. Use a rag to remove any excess grit and grease. You can get all the springs back into position before starting on the paws. 
squeeze the loop of the spring to slide it back in its seat. Check that none of the springs are protruding from the top of the freehub body. Be sure you orient the paw with the step facing out. Use the bottom edge of the paw to depress the spring, and then rotate the ball end into position. If you're using a grease gun, simply fill the cavity between the paw and the spring. You can do this with three paws in an alternating pattern, or all six paws for a quieter ride. As the free hub spins, the grease will migrate between the paws. Make sure the interface between the paw and the pocket is lubricated. A dab of oil on the top of each paw will do the trick. Actuate the paw to make sure the oil seeps in. If you don't have the oil, a dab of grease on the back of the paw works just as well. You'll need a punch to remove the bearings in the freehub body. Start with the outboard bearing. Use the edge of the punch to offset the spacer in the freehub. Catch the revealed edge of the bearing with the punch. As always, move around the bearing with the punch so that you push it out as straight as possible. Once the outboard bearing is removed, the spacer will come out freely. Using a deep socket, set the freehub body in place to remove the inner bearing. Follow the same procedure for removing the bearing as straight as possible. The 15mm axle on the Hydra allows for a larger cross section on both of these free hub bearings. This is for increased durability. Just like with your hub shell bearings, put a light coating of grease on the outside before pressing. For the free hub, you'll press one bearing at a time. Start with the double row bearing. This is the inboard position of the free hub body. You'll need the 152610-7 press adapter for this job. With the double row bearing staged, insert the press adapter. Now you can stage the press. Use the flat edge of the 15307 adapter against the face of the free hub shell. Be sure the double row bearing is pressed completely into its seat. With your double row bearing in place, you can insert the spacer and stage your outboard bearing. You'll use the same press adapter for the outboard bearing. Use the flat side of the 15307 adapter against the double row bearing on the back side of the free hub body. With the adapters in place, begin pressing the outboard bearing. Be sure to press the bearing fully into its seat. If the bearings are fully seated, the spacer can still move off of center, but should not have play between the bearings. Be sure to rotate the free hub counterclockwise as it's pressed in. With the free hub reinstalled, you can grease the two outboard bearings. A light coating of grease on each will do the trick. Push the end cap back on over the grease. With fresh bearings and your free hub re-lubricated, you're ready to reinstall your cassette and rotor. Now you're ready to move on to the front wheel. With the wheel out of the fork, pull the end caps. Once again, these are tool free. With Hydra's 15 mil system, you'll notice the axle protrudes through the bearing on both sides of the hub. The axle tube can be used to remove the bearings, just like the rear hub shell. Simply strike the axle tube directly on the edge. With one bearing out of the way, reinsert the axle and strike it from the opposite side to get the other bearing free.
Wipe the bearing seats and hub shell clean. Now you can stage the axle and bearings in the hub shell. You'll need both your 61804 press adapters for this. Be sure to use the beveled side facing the bearing. Once your press is installed and the adapters aligned, you can begin pressing the bearings. Be sure they go fully into their seat. A light coating of grease should be applied to the outboard face of both bearings. With the bearings greased, the end caps can be reinstalled. This type of routine maintenance will greatly increase the life of your Hydra hubs. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the trails.